This year's NBA draft was exciting for a lot of NBA fans, and that's mainly due to there being an overload of talent that could potentially change franchises, or they're the missing piece to a team that was just on the edge of making the playoffs last season. Here are our five winners of the NBA draft. Let's start with the obvious draft winner, the San Antonio Spurs. Selecting 7'5 Victor Wimbenyama is a game-changing move. The skills he possesses at such a height is impossible to grasp. His impact on both ends of the floor is not something we're accustomed to see. Offensively, the Spurs were 23rd in points scored per game and 25th in field goal percentage, so it was obvious they had a tough time putting the ball in the hoop. They do have two rising scores, Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell. Johnson averaged 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game, shooting 33% from 3. At 6'5", 230 pounds, he is built like a tank. He can create his shot and get downhill at a solid level. He just needs to improve his overall efficiency from 3, the free throw line, and his shot selection. He has the talent and the skill to be a first option, but with Devin Vassell coming back healthy next season and now bringing in Wimbenyama, he will have to step it up next season if he wants to be that first option. Vassell only played 33 games due to injury, but in those limited games, he averaged nearly 20 points while shooting 38% from three and being an excellent defender. His scoring bag is improving by the year. He came into the league as your typical 3 and D wing, but last year before he went down, he showcased the ability to create his shot off the dribble. In fact, he was one of the best mid-range scorers in the NBA. So now you throw a player like Victor into that mix and you have a promising offensive trio. I know all the critics are weary of his lack of muscle, and while they are right in a sense, he's so tall and skilled around the basket that it might not be the problem that everyone thinks it is. For example, when Evan Mobley was drafted, his big concern was his weight. They said he would get pushed around on defense and he would get bodied like players like Joel Embiid, but in his first season, Mobley was one of the best defensive players in the NBA. This season, he was in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation, so his weight didn't play nearly the factor that everyone previously thought. I know he did struggle offensively, especially in the playoffs, but he isn't and wasn't half the talent Victor Wembanyama is offensively. On the defensive end, the Spurs were atrocious. Victor's shot blocking and ability to defend in space will finally turn their defense in the right direction. Not to mention, they have Jeremy Sohan, who proved to be an excellent, versatile defensive stopper. Those two on the court together will be fun to watch for sure. All in all, the 7'5 French kid is absolutely special. He can dribble like a guard, shoot like a sniper and defend like a future defensive player of the year. Now, I'm not saying he's going to lead the Spurs to the playoffs in year one while dominating the NBA. Absolutely not. He's still a rookie. But still, it would be wise to think that he's going to make at least a small difference from the jump. His confidence is high. He said this in response to people wanting him to change his game to fit the NBA. No one will stop me from dribbling, bringing the ball up, and shooting threes. Nobody's going to stop me from doing that. Even though sometimes coaches in my career would try to stop me from doing that because they had to win right now. So it was an everyday fight to stay true to myself. This is something I will never lose. Yeah, we could all use that kind of confidence. The next winner of the NBA draft is the Charlotte Hornets. Drafting 6'8 Brandon Miller didn't surprise anyone. Everyone knew he would be second behind Victor from day one. Miller's going to be fun to watch playing alongside LaMelo Ball. LaMelo is one of the most unselfish playmakers in the game today. So Miller's going to get as many touches as he needs, and their ability to build chemistry together will be monumental to Charlotte's success next season. This duo is either going to go really good or really bad. No in between. However, we think everything's going to work itself out over time. His ability to shoot the three and score off the dribble is much needed, because if you thought the Spurs were a bad scoring team, then just know the Hornets were much, much worse. They were 27th in points per game, and it certainly didn't help that Miles Bridges and Lomelo Ball were out. Many people don't remember just how good Bridges was becoming. In his last season on the court, he averaged 20 points throughout 80 games, grabbed 7 rebounds, and shot 50% from the floor and 80% from the free throw line. Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, and Lomelo could be the beginning of something special. Also, they drafted Nick Smith Jr. out of Arkansas. Although he only played 17 games due to injury, he could be a valuable shooter. Charlotte does need to beef up their defense, though. That big three is talented offensively, but they are all average to below average defenders, which is never a good sign. Mark Williams will, without a doubt, be cleaning up many of their mistakes. The third winner of the draft is the Houston Rockets. They selected Amon Thompson, the athletic freak from the Overtime League. Houston has an entire arsenal of offensive talent with Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr., Alperen Shingun, and now Thompson. While he does struggle from three, which is something the Rockets were terrible with, he can get to the basket at a pretty high level. And I think we're going to see that early in his rookie season. The most important aspect of this draft selection is his defensive upside. Judging a player's defense in the Overtime Elite League is hard. 
Still, some things couldn't be ignored, such as his overall effort and ability to read passing lanes. With that length and athleticism, those things will translate to the NBA. And with Ime Odoka being the coach, things will be a lot different in Houston. Their energy, attitude, and effort on the court will show us just how good this young core can be. The good thing about Thompson is that he understands he isn't the best shooter and said this after the draft. I'm just trying to get better, become a better shooter. It's going to take time, but I put in the work, so I'm not worried about that. I know I'm going to be a great shooter, just going to get to my strengths until then. And the Rockets didn't stop there because they would draft Cam Whitmore at pick 20. The reason he fell so far was due to medical concerns. Scouts were skeptical about his knee health, and it's reported that he even underperformed in the workouts. But before you get scared, Rocket fans, just remember this. The same thing happened with Michael Porter Jr. He fell to 14th due to all of the injuries he endured. Fast forward to 2023, he's now an NBA champion while being a key contributor. The fourth draft winner is the Dallas Mavericks. As we all know, they missed the playoffs this season. They were great offensively. Luka and Kyrie Irving both were dominant scorers, and the Mavs were even eighth in three-point percentage. So the offense was not a problem, but their defense was non-existent after the Kyrie trade. They had no defensive stoppers, nor a good rim protector. And that was the reasoning behind drafting 7'1 Derek Lively out of Duke. He might be the best defensive player Luka Doncic has ever played with. And yes, I'm saying that before he's even played one game. That shows you just how poor a level of rim protector Luka has played with. Christian Wood, Dwight Powell, aging and banged up JaVale McGee were their best rim protecting options. And of course, he did play with Kristaps Porzingis, who was a good defensive center. And to his credit, their paint defense as a team was good when he was there. But things didn't work out between him and Luka. And now they have a more modern center to pair with Luka. Someone who can protect the paint and serve as a premier lob threat in the pick and roll. And while Derek is good, he isn't the sole reason the Mavericks were one of our top five draft winners. On draft night, the Kings traded Rashawn Holmes and Olivier Maxence Prosper. Holmes is a tremendous rebounder who can also protect the rim. This move went under the radar, and people needed to be more aware of the defensive impact Derek Lively and Rashawn Holmes would bring. If you want to know how rim protection can change a defense, look no further than the Lakers. When Anthony Davis is on the court, the Lakers have the best defense in the NBA. Without him, they're in the middle of the pack. And I'm not saying either of the new Mavericks additions will be AD on the defensive end. Nobody's AD. But they are good enough to make a difference. And the fifth and final winner is the Portland Trailblazers. Scoot Henderson was selected third overall. And despite all of the Damian Lillard trade rumors flying around, I can honestly say whether Dame leaves or stays in Portland, they will still be draft winners. They have an explosive and dynamic young core. Anthony Simons, Shadon Sharp, and Scoot Henderson are enough of a future threat that I would have no problem trading Damian Lillard. Now just imagine the trade assets you could get back for Dame. I would strongly entertain trading Dame to Brooklyn for Nick Claxton. I mean, could you imagine Matisse Thybul and Nick Claxton causing chaos on defense while Scoot, Simons, and Shadon put on a show offensively? Portland, do this now. And there you have it. That's our top five draft winners. But we do have two more honorable mentions before you go. First, the Los Angeles Lakers drafted a six foot six point guard in Jalen Hood. He just turned 20 years old, and Lakers scouts and head of operations are very high on him. He's an outstanding playmaker who can see over defenses and run the break. I don't know how much of an impact he's going to have for the Lakers in his rookie season, but I wouldn't dare underestimate the Lakers player development staff. The next honorable mention is the Utah Jazz, selecting Taylor Hendricks out of UCF. He is is someone we should all be watching. Offensively, he's an athletic finisher who excels at catching lobs while possessing a shot from the outside, showcasing a solid potential to become a pick and pop type of guy. And defensively, he's an absolute monster. He's undoubtedly the most versatile defender in this year's draft. At six foot nine, he's an amazing above the rim shot blocker and will contest absolutely anything and excels at chasing down blocks. He's also an elite help side shot blocker who also has the speed and the mobility to guard out on the perimeter. So he can guard one through five while being an excellent rim protector. Does that sound like anyone you know? I'm looking over at you, Giannis. I'm not saying that's who he's going to be. Nobody's the Greek freak. But defensively, they play the same. But what do you think about the draft? Who were your winners and who were your losers? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.